Hello, this is Eric of NotBIOS and welcome to the story of AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. If you want to see the detailed history of AMD, click the link above or refer to the description below. The story of Advanced Micro Devices starts with a company of talented employees working together at Fairchild Semiconductor. This was a time where the transistor was being miniaturized, the large vacuum tubes, well, they were becoming a thing of the past. And so computers were shrinking and so were the transistors, which were much more efficient. Jerry Saunders was unhappy with his work environment and the lack of opportunity provided to him. He felt cornered and knew he could do so much more. So Jerry and seven other extremely talented colleagues, they left Fairchild. Jerry himself, he was an electrical engineer and worked as a director of marketing at Fairchild. On May 1st, 1969, Advanced Micro Devices was incorporated. AMD first began in Santa Clara to shortly after move to Sunnyvale, California. This is the area known as Silicon Valley due to the sand being made into silicon that made up those transistors. Jerry saw a future with this cheap to produce highly advanced silicon transistor building material. It's easy to leave this man as being simply a talented engineer. He knew how to sell himself and the company. This is a time when the silicon transistor, they were the hot new thing, so the time was right. This stuff would practically sell itself. All they need to do is find their place in the market and run with it. Saunders saw a lack of quality in the logic chip industry, so this is where he went for, and he ran with it. AMD's first product was a simple transistor circuit known as the shift register. At the time, this was a simple device and had some demand in the world of silicon. One year later, 1970, the company produced its first proprietary product, an integrated circuit known as a logic counter, which counted and stored processes of the digital system. With the success of this product, it would be 1971 that the company would try its hand in the new market for memory, random access memory. By the end of that year, the company had sales that already reached a staggering 4.6 million, which accounted for inflation in 2021 was $29.6 million. Being spread thin with research and development costs, they applied for an IPO to receive public funding. Shortly after this time, they become a second source supplier for Intel MOS circuits, which is used for current and voltage control. In 1975, AMD reverse engineered an Intel CPU. This event it resulted in an agreement with Intel that allowed AMD into an x86 license agreement, in which Intel would make some income from the production of these CPUs. Seven years later, the company also managed to become a second source supplier for IBM. Intel being the first source. In 1977, AMD produced a computer system together with Siemens under the name of Advanced Microcomputers. These systems were sold for only a short time due to lack of, well, product success. In 1979, AMD entered the stock market and furthered itself into the telecommunications industry. By 1985, due to competition in the market, their focus was pushed back further into the processor market. They had not seen much success in the telecommunications market, and the margins on memory at this time were often like razor slim. And so therefore, AMD dropped production of DRAM. AMD had been doing rather well competing with Intel. However, by 1982, AMD and Intel had a fallout due to AMD's consistently outshining Intel at their own CPUs. AMD was left on its own to figure out how to make their own CPU with the x86 code. By 1991, they finally won the rights to sell their own version of a reverse engineered Intel CPU. To compete, AMD for many years would undercut Intel's pricing in order to get sales and be known in the market. In 1994, Advanced Micro Devices did reach a major milestone by completing construction of their own processor manufacturing plant. Only AMD and Intel were able to produce their own processors in-house having a fab, while companies like Cyrix would be left depending on other manufacturing facilities. In 1998, 
AMD made its first ever major update to the x86 CPU code through an instruction set they would name 3 d Now, which was an effective way to compete with Intel's MMX and SIMD expanded code to accelerate processing, especially in 3D rendering. In the year 2000, AMD finally made a truly competitive CPU fully produced by themselves without the aid of Intel. This was codenamed Thunderbird, the processor known as Athlon, the first CPU using copper interconnects for electrical wiring rather than aluminum. Copper allowed faster speeds, all the while functioning cooler and at higher efficiencies. In 2003, AMD produced the first consumer 64-bit processor which allowed more memory, more storage and greater complexity without consistent system conflicts. Ironically, it was now Intel that made an agreement with AMD for the x64-bit code. This same year, AMD entered the flash memory production together with Fujitsu and named the joint company Spansion. For the company, this was a short-term investment because in 2005, flash memory prices crashed and AMD sold off their share of the company. In 2005, AMD also made its first entrance into the server market and opened a second production plant adjacent to the first one. Demand for their CPUs was high due to being faster than Intel's Pentium 4 products. In 2006, however, is when AMD purchased ATI Technologies based in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. At a cost of at least $5.4 billion, AMD paid more than they actually had in liquidity on hand. The fear was falling behind and they wanted graphic patents. This would leave advanced micro devices cash strapped, but all at the same time they were confident and feeling almost invincible. This was a purchase that almost led to the end of the company. Only days after, Intel announced their core processors, which were very competitive. So what happened? For nearly a decade, AMD laid off a very large portion of the company. I'm talking about tens of thousands. They sold off their fabs. They sold off its mobile graphics division in 2009 to a company who now controls almost all the mobile market, Qualcomm, for a meager cost of $65 million. AMD still had the ATI dedicated graphics division for which the most part struggled to compete with NVIDIA. That was their major competition. And as of the beginning of 2021, NVIDIA still maintains an estimated 80% of the dedicated graphics market. In 2011, AMD produced their first CPU with built-in graphics together with ATI that they purchased five years earlier. This simply allowed more affordable processors. AMD had fallen behind in the processor market this time. Intel had a far superior product to AMD. Sales had gr fallen greatly. In fact, they fallen so greatly that they had to pay penalties to the fabrication plant that they sold off, as they promised many more wafers to be sold. In 2013, AMD made a deal with Sony and Microsoft that had their processors be at the heart of the PlayStation and Xbox systems. These deals provided very slim margins, but helped to keep the company from becoming bankrupt. In 2014, AMD made an open sourced graphics API named Mantle. In 2016, AMD dabbled with ARM CPUs for the server market, but these were a flop due to not meeting performance demands for that market. Intel products were far superior. AMD, however, was on the verge of a new CPU release coming soon. So they sold this design of this unreleased CPU to a Chinese company for extra funds. They needed to avoid defaulting on their upcoming loan repayment obligations. In 2017, AMD finally released this new CPU and named it Ryzen. It had been in the works for years. AMD dropped the built-in graphics to focus on processor speeds to compete with Intel. Later on, adding graphics once they add their first series of CPUs on the table. Due to Intel's lead, advanced micro devices, they were competing on price to performance. However, productivity tasks were very favorable, but gaming was a weakness. It wouldn't be until Ryzen 3000 was released in 2019 that AMD would compete very favorably, and in 2020, the Ryzen 5000 series, leaving Intel playing catch up. If it weren't for Intel's higher pricing throughout the years, there would be no AMD right now. Also, the missteps of Intel, 
that left him on the same processing node since 2015? This gave AMD the upper hand. Normally the processing node is advanced every two years or so. So for five, six years now, they're on the same node and this has left them behind. In 2020, AMD did a major purchase of the company Xilinx for $35 billion through an all-stock transaction. This purchase should allow AMD to reach more markets and create more specialized, higher margin, task-specific processors. AMD is making larger margins for itself, but to avoid falling behind, it is also increasing research and development spending to stay competitive. Historically, AMD did one thing that has actually worked for them well. They reinvested their gains to their future in themselves. With processor tech shrinking so small, current production methods will eventually cause major issues. R&D spending is required and future materials beyond silicon will become more expensive than the low cost abundant silicon of today. This is the story of advanced micro devices to this day. They are in a much stronger position than ever before, but they are also very focused. Intel is huge with large margins, but they are also very diversified beyond CPUs that we all know them for. Intel is not done with their battle against AMD, and ARM intends to enter the CPU desktop market. Even Apple desktop processors for the first time use ARM. The danger to the x86 processors, how old the code is, with its limitations that hinder its processing power. Intel may very well be strong-armed into the world of ARM processors altogether with AMD. Thank you for watching and have yourselves a wonderful day. This is not BIOS Tech and